bad does it have to be for an inspection to fail? <laughs> yeah, you know, this is a question as a realtor, I get asked all the time. I first get asked, what's the difference between an inspector and appraiser? A lot of people don't understand oh, yeah. that difference. That, and it's a huge difference. And then I get asked, well, how are we going to know that the house passed? What is your take on this? Well, unfortunately, there's no gr one answer for this. There is no pass or fail with a home inspection. Yeah. And yeah. the best thing that I can tell is, uh, is it's not quite an analogy, but homes are built long before most of us have seen them and they will be there long after we either sell them or we forget about them. Yeah. They're designed to last generations, you know, multiple generations. And it's really subjective to what the buyer is going to be able to handle. Number one, are they the DIY and can they handle that type of work that they expect it to be able to do on their own? Like JT? Are they going, <laughs> are they going into it saying, oh, I can handle that without knowing the full scope of the issues when they yeah. start tearing things down? Uh, or, <clears throat> excuse me, or do you have the other side of the token where they have ex a very expected short stay, they want to live in that house for a certain period of time, and then mm -hmm. they want to move on and let the next person worry about that? Yeah. They're really deciding how ambitious the buyer is going to be. Number one, if you're not going to be doing it yourself, do you have the resources to potentially right. correct the things that do need to be corrected? Because my biggest thing as a home inspector is I'm not worried about, you know, um, the biggest thing I'm worrying about is the resale value. And I'm not saying that the other parts aren't as important health and safety, you know, things falling down, things that could kill people. Those are definitely important. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to when houses, a lot of problems can sit and stay latent for a long period of time. Yes, they can. And until they get corrected, you really have no idea what the scope of the work is or the cost of the work is. So to say pass and fail, wrong. You have to look at it from a relative point and saying, what is your ambitions with the house? Do you want to move into a house that is move-in ready and you don't want to worry about anything for five years till your son graduates and then you move when he goes to college? Mm -hmm. Well, then you need to be looking at, you know, the house in a different way than the person who wants to be there for the rest of their lives. Yeah. You know, and again, I, I hate to not answer your question directly, but there is no pass and fail. Well, I think that's a perfect answer. I actually. agree. Um, I agree. And, you know, Keith mentioned my husband, JT, we intentionally bought a house that needed a decent amount of work. We knew that when we walked into it and a lot of people do that. But what mm -hmm. a decent amount of work to us is, is yes. extremely different yep. than a decent amount of work to this gentleman or to this gentleman um, and to many of my clients. A lot of people think a decent amount of work is just painting. That's just the tip of the iceberg for us. Um, some people think, oh, well, we'll knock all the walls down and rebuild everything. So it really, really depends on your threshold. I often get into this conversation with my clients, not only on the quality of the house as far as the inspection's concerned, but also crime in the area, um, sex offenders, things like that. You can look up all that data and my response on whether it's okay or not is going to be very different than the person sitting next to me on whether it's okay for them. So there is no pass or fail. It is you personally as the buyer, Yep. what you feel is a pass or fail. Well, that's the cool thing about a real estate transaction in its simplest form. It can be so tailored to whatever you wanna do because people ask me that question all the time. What's the right mortgage for me? Well, it depends, right? What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to accomplish? How long are you going to be in the house? Should I pull cash? So, you know, it, it's great that you take that time to get to know people and ask those dating type questions so you, you can understand what they, what they need um, and apply to it. And this is my first podcast, folks, but if you notice the theme between the three of us here, there was no rehearsing or anything. But again, there's no straight answer nope. for any question like that. There is no pass and fail. And if your agent, your loan officer, the inspector doesn't take the time to get to know you to find out what your needs are to trying to fulfill, pick the next one on the list. Move on. I wanna, <laughs> you know, I want to compare this to dating because you brought that up. This is not like picking who you're going to work with for for these professions. This is not like a swipe. <laughs> Right? No. You've got to get into the details. Is that to Tinder? Find out. I think that's yeah. Tinder. I don't know. I've been married too long to know. But, <laughs> but this is this is not like a, just a swipe. Oh, that that looks good. No, you need to ask the questions and get to know these people and make sure that they're looking out for your best interests. <laughs>